FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. This episode of the Financial Survival Network is brought to you in part by Sandstorm Gold Royalties. Sandstorm Gold Royalties is a different kind of gold company. They purchase royalties on select mining operations and receive a percentage of the revenue in return. Sandstorm now has a portfolio of over 185 gold royalties around the world. See how gold royalties differ from other gold mining investments at sandstormgold.com. That's sandstormgold.com. Sandstorm Gold Royalties trades on the TSX as SSL and on the New York Stock Exchange American as SAND. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's, can you believe it, November 13th, 2018. Time waits for no one, as the Rolling Stones once said, and I think a wiser philosopher than them said it as well. But uh, in the meantime, we're catching up with our good friend, Captain Capitalism, Aaron Clary. And uh, make sure you take a look at his his site, which is captaincapitalism.blogspot.com. Hey, as always, be a part of the show. Join us. Email us at kl at com. Well, Captain Capitalism, Aaron, welcome back. Hello. Thanks, Kerry. Thanks for having me on. Hey, so it's been a while. But uh, we never lose touch. You're in. You're up north. You're freezing your butt off uh, down here. It's <laughs> a it's a a bone numbing eighty one degrees in Palm Beach County. It's a it's great weather to count votes in. <laughs> your your temperature is literally ten times our temperature up here this morning. <laughs> Eight hey. degrees this morning, and I'm like, and I thought about you. I thought I was like, ah, oh, Kerry's probably just at his pool or something right now, and like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it is. It is miserable here. We got the fire starting, and it, it hasn't even been. Uh, it's not even Thanksgiving yet. Not even Thanksgiving yet. Well, speaking of fires starting, have you seen what's going on in California? I was literally a mile and a half, two miles away from those wildfires. And I'll tell you, Aaron, you never saw anything like it. There were clouds in the sky, dark brown clouds. They weren't clouds. They were smoke from the fires going on, and they were Mm -hmm. out of control. And at night, you could see them up in the hills flaming out, and there was nothing that man could do to stop these fires. Uh, Isolated spots, yes. Uh, supposedly now the fire is 20% under control. I don't know how you make that measurement. Have you ever stopped to figure out, well, well, it's still burning like crazy, burning tens of thousands of acres, but we got it 20% under control. I mean, <laughs> is that confidence inspiring or what? I, well, I, don't, I did see a lot of forest fires when I lived in Wyoming. And uh, the difference between Wyoming and California is there are no people in Wyoming. So they, well, a lot of times they just let those burn out because they knew it would go up a canyon or something like that and never run out of fuel. Uh, but frankly, I couldn't care about California. I don't care about Malibu too bad. I, uh, Oh geez, the liberal houses are burning. That's just, that's just too bad for them. I, as long as it's not my house, I don't care. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you got to feel for them as people. That's a horrible thing to go through to lose your life's possessions, which is why you shouldn't get too attached to anything or anyone because in a moment's, uh, as that song, uh, by Megan Trainer, you know, in a puff of smoke, it could all be gone, right? Yep, yep. But uh, I, uh, I, I am probably a, that's why I don't really, really build on, um, you know, hurricane zones or floodplains or uh, places where there might be wildfires. But we don't really have that problem here in the Twin Cities. We just have an abundance of snow. That's why there's no fire threat is because of all the snow and the cold on the ground. Well, you know what it is is that you're uh, too rational. You know. That's your problem. <laughs> I mean, hey, to not build on an earthquake fault, gee, that's really dumb. Why would you want to do that? Yeah, yeah. Although I'll tell you this, um, <clears throat> there is at least California. I mean, we got the same taxes effectively as California. At least in California, we do have nice weather. <laughs> uh, and a, a buddy of mine and I were talking about how Minnesota is kind of the worst of both worlds, where we don't even have the weather here. Mm-hmm. Um, it, and they, they, they crassly joke. This is like dating a, a, a fat woman that has attitude and lip on top of it. It's just like, there's no <laughs> redeeming quality whatsoever. Uh, and so, uh, 
especially after the last election we had, uh, Minnesota turned hard left. Yeah. And now uh, a lot of people uh, are, you know, they say it, but they're they're not like uh, Barbara Streisand. I know several people that are already making plans to move, including myself. So um, we're we're getting out of Dodge and and the capital flight has begun. Hey, and it's been going on in New York since I was a glimmer in my uh, in my mother's eye. Literally, when you think about it, the, the capital flight's been going on you know, for two generations now, Aaron, and it's not an accident, you are effectively voting with your feet, correct? Correct, correct. And I would say, I mean, it, it happens throughout history. I mean, people are have always moved their capital. Uh, the East Indians are trying to smuggle gold out because of the capital controls East India put on their people. The, the Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, I'd say the lion's share of its value Mm-hmm. Are people under kleptocracies and dictatorships trying to get whatever they possibly can? My friend Khan, uh, when his family escaped Vietnam, they had to ex- uh, uh, escape with things like watches and jewelry and right. be very clandestine. And but you know, thankfully here in the United States, within a, an interstate uh, uh, environment, you can vote with your feet without having to really change your uh, citizenship or anything terribly drastic. So. A lot of the Minnesotans are now, uh, you know, calling up realtors, looking this spring uh, to go to South Dakota, where there's uh, no state income taxes, a much more conservative, traditional, pro-American uh, environment. But then uh, South Dakota isn't much better temperature wise. And so I know a lot of people are like, well, let's go down to Florida. You've got a, you guys got a decent economy down there. You got warmth. Maybe it's yeah. a little humid. Uh, but no, there's there's so many other places to be than Cold New York, snowy Minnesota, Michigan, um, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Boston. Yeah, I I don't know why people stay there. I can't quite figure it out either. You know, the only thing I thought about when I moved here, Aaron, was that uh, I should have done it a lot sooner, but I couldn't have uh, Mm because kids were in school and all that. I didn't want to take them out of the schools, family business, and then a business that had to be in New York. But if you don't have a business and you don't have family that keeps you in a particular place, why stay there? Mm-hmm. Well, in, in one of the books, I wrote, not to plug my book, but one of the key fun, uh, principles of this book was called Reconnaissance Man. And I talk about the, the time to move, the time to explore is when you're young. So for you and me and yes. the majority of our audience members, this is already uh, academic and moot. It, it's, it's retrospective, but perhaps they could pass on the wisdom to their children or their nephews or their nieces that if I had not attended the University of Minnesota simply because it had reciprocity from where I was from, Wisconsin, mm-hmm. um, I would have had a much happier and better life. Because when you go to college or the first place you live as an adult, you immediately start planning roots, be it uh, <clears throat> financial, familial, social, professional. And then it's really hard to extract yourself mm-hmm. from that environment. Exactly. Uh, and then once you have kids, as you point out, yeah, well, they're in school, you get a business started, uh, you buy a house, then it's re- you really are anchored to that state. Um, yes. So I'm seeing uh the, the situation is so bad here in Minnesota. I can tell you all about the, the leftist politicians we voted uh, in, but it really doesn't matter. Um, I know same. people who have kids and are pulling their kids out like, this is the last year. We're done with this and we're out of here. Good for but to, to make it easier or for any of your listening audience that might happen to be younger, please don't even put you do not waste your youth on large metro areas like L.A., New York, San Francisco. I know everyone wants to go work in Silicon Valley. Go to places like Texas, Tennessee, Florida, and mm-hmm. eh, South Dakota, maybe not because it's not a big city environment. Um, Arizona, uh, Nevada, Las Vegas. Go to these places because if you're going to work hard, you're going to uh, bust your rear off for all these years, you know, at least not have a state income tax. You know, just and, and go where it's warm. That's another thing people kind of uh, they they take for granted is go where it's warm. It's just don't bother with snow. Don't bother with shoveling. Go where it's warm. Couldn't agree with you more. And uh, if I had it all to do over again, I would have followed that advice. Who knows? Maybe I would have been in California because mm-hmm. the only other place I really would have gone to school was in in L.A. or in uh, I should say. Uh, you know, someplace in sunny Southern Cal and uh, life would be totally different now, you know? So who can say, who can say, 
But what I can tell you is what you're saying is absolutely true. That, uh, hey, you know, you know the old saying, uh, Aaron, it's just as easy to, uh, to marry a, a rich man or a rich woman as a poor one. It's just mm-hmm. as easy to, to live in a low-tax state or low-cost state as it is to settle in a high-tax state. In fact, it's right. actually easier, believe it or not. So, yeah, you know, like the fact is that if you're young and you've got the flexibility, you don't have any millstones around your neck, take advantage of it because it could be the only chance you get. And that might even be, uh, the choice might even be to live in a foreign country, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's and and a lot of things, uh, one of the main thing I would say, uh, for younger people is I guess they're intimidated or daunted by moving from home. Cause they, let's, let's admit it. The first time you're moving out of the house, it doesn't matter if you move 10 miles away or a thousand miles away, it's still very daunting. But if you add, well, now I'm removed from my family and all that. Um, I still say it's worth it. I still say it's worth it. I mean, even if you have to go into a town blind or maybe stay at home and work up the money. So you have like maybe six months living reserves, mm-hmm. just go to a town Find any job you can just to get established. I mean, you're not going to work McDonald's or delivering pizzas all your life, but but drive Uber, uh, join the military, do what you got to do to yes. get out of a high tax state when you're younger. Go to come or maybe even gain residency. You know, work in the state for a year, become an actual citizen, and then gain gain in state uh, residency and tuition uh, mm-hmm. for that state's uh, university education system. Uh, but the, the time really is now, and it's not going to be any easier in the future. I know it's intimidating and daunting to go to a foreign land, uh, uh, either in the United States or overseas. Mm-hmm. But when you have the youth and the energy and you don't have the added burden and expenses of a family or debts or cars or student yeah. loans, you're, you're the most mobile you are now. And, and I cannot mm-hmm. recommend enough uh, that if you are living up in, you know, uh, say, Connecticut, or Ohio. Oh, heaven forbid, Ohio, you pay local income taxes. You know, go down to Kentucky, go to Tennessee. You're not going to go that far away and see what they got going on there for a summer. And uh, it it will make, it'll set your life on a trajectory that's, that's way better uh, than you just stayed at, stayed at home. Yeah. When I think back uh, how much taxes I paid in uh, New York and New Jersey, my whole life, it's, uh, if I had that money, be a different uh, life, you know, Mm -hmm. it would be different, but you know, those are the things you need to think about for sure. Hey, so, so what else, what else have you been doing with yourself, Aaron? What's, uh, what's been going on? How's a hole consulting uh, proceeding? That's, that's going great. Um, That's uh, a, it stagnated. Finally, it was growing, growing, growing. And finally, tailored off, which is fine because, uh, unfortunately, but necessarily kind of like insurance, uh, what I've had to do recently is diversify, uh, my brand. And the reason mm-hmm. why is because of all the sensors and the deplatforming and the banning that's been going on with YouTube, Amazon, um, PayPal, things like that. So I invested a lot of effort and time in the past with my books and the podcast and all that other stuff. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Alex Jones got deplatformed. Sure. I don't know if you heard of Roosh V. Um, he's an author that Amazon got rid of nine of his 14 books because he really, he, he really, he literally got banned because they wrote a book on how to pick up women and get laid. Oh yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, I know that guy. What's wrong with yeah, that? Yeah. What the hell is wrong because with that? Th- but that's, 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 there's nothing wrong with it. It's what we've done since time immemorial, Carrie. That's what men are programmed to do. But being man yeah. is, is illegal. It's bad now. So mm-hmm. he got he got the platform by a bunch of, you know, social justice idiots. warriors in Amazon. Idiots. Um, you mean idiots. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, no, they're Nazis. They're, they're, they're fascist, dictatorial Nazis. They do yeah. not like the freedom of speech. Just because a guy mm-hmm. dares to say, well, I'd like to get laid every once in a while. Oh my gosh, we got to ban it because it's sexist. That's not sexist. That is what it is. That's men. I, I, I don't know. I, I hope I didn't hurt the burning ears of the women in your listening audience. But yes, ladies, men want to have sex with you. That is that is true. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, but that is a, a harsh reality. In fact, uh, the fact is they dress 
as if they wanted to have sex with the men too. They no, might not. We don't know. We're going to get we're going to get banned, Carrie. You and I are going to get banned for saying that. Who's going to ban us? Uh, <laughs> I've never been big on uh, on YouTubes, and uh, you know, let them ban away. I've, I yeah. just don't care anymore. I've b- built my model so that I didn't have to worry about shadow banning and nonsense right. like that, Aaron. <laughs> right. So. Well, anyway, so what I've what I've had to do um, is spend a significant amount of time, not necessarily resources, but time setting up backup channels. Yeah, you have so to. So I have a, yeah, you have to. So I have a backup channel and website, olderbrother.com. I have a podcast called Older Brother. It's on YouTube. It parallels a whole consulting, except it's not as cursy and bad language. Um, and then I also set up an LLC anonymously okay. over good. in Nevada. Very good. I have, yep. I have, a, um, I'm working on several other projects under a different name. Um, all of which though, sadly has nothing to do with truth or honesty or, or blunt no. forth honesty, but, uh, frankly, it's lies and deceits. I want to capitalize on the Harlequin romance kind of Oprah market where women are, will pay you egregious sums of money to be lied to. Oh. Uh, but where, that is to you, also you, diversify out of my current uh, business. All right. If you find some of them, uh, let me know, please. Cause I'm an, I'm, an, <laughs> I'm an expert at lying to women. So, you know, just, uh, just let them, uh, just let me know. Okay. But, but you have to tell the best lies, Carrie, they have to be sweet uh, irresistible lies. You can't just say mm. you're pretty. You got to say like Oprah does and promise the world and, and then we'll take care of you from cradle to grave. It's, it's, it's like being a chef. You just can't give them blanket lies. You got to oh. make the best, most that succulent that lies that they pay top dollar for. So that's how it works. Oh, well, I, I'll tell you this, Carrie, let me, I, I someday, this is why uh, when they say, if I had a genie in the bottle, what would I, I would wish for total knowledge because one thing I want to know is like, there's marketers out there. It's like, how do you get women to spend $5,000 on shoes or a handbag? Like Jimmy Choo shoes. I don't know if you ever heard of these oh, shoes. Sure. But they're, and, uh, yeah, there's thousands, thousands of dollars. What, what's the formula? Chris, how do you get women to fork over Christian, that much money for uh, shoes? Christian Labouton, too. You know, that's in uh, the Manolo Blahniks. If you're, look, if you're Melania Trump, then money is no object spend all you mm-hmm. like, but for a normal middle-class woman, you know, go for the knockoffs, but they don't want knockoffs. And, you know, they'll spend $2,500 on a Chanel purse. And uh, the list goes on and on here, Aaron. Right, right. So why can't you and I unlock the secret, that formula, and we come up with the Lutz Clary purse? See? Yeah, I like And it's it. even better and it. fancier. See, that's, that's why I want them giving us twenty five grand for our fancy shoes that we designed over in Florida or something. Hey, all you have to do, and I'm an expert in shoe design, you just make those things (laughs) as uncomfortable as possible with the heels as high as possible (laughs) with straps that cut into their feet and uh, that make them start thinking that they're getting gangrene in their toes and they'll they'll line up around (laughs) the block to buy them, Aaron, because pain is good. Yeah, pain is good, I guess, I guess. But anyway, so that's, that's kind of where it's an interesting world. Uh, and I, I'm not just saying, oh, I'm doing it, but I have been consuming uh, painfully a voracious amount of feminist and female podcasts, mm-hmm. uh, which are painful. Absolutely. Yeah. But the insights I've been gaining oh, my God. are, are amazing. Uh, and it's, and at, yet at the same time, okay. ripplingly sad and depressing. Well, but let, me, yeah, it's, uh, let me give you two pieces of advice. Do not mm-hmm. keep a rope attached to the rafters with a chair under it while you listen to those podcasts and do not enter your bathtub with a razor blade. Okay. Do not go into the bath, a warm bath with a razor blade, because if you're listening to those podcasts, you, uh, you might just decide to end it all. It's, it's not as sad. Well, it is sad, but I, I feel bad for, for the women who listen to it. And I don't mean that in a Mm -hmm. condescending sense, but uh, I mean, to, to simplify what I've witnessed or my findings is I, uh, I think part of the formula is uh, to tell women uh, that they, they, they only need themselves, that they, the, 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 that they can be secure within themselves and they don't need men. And yeah. that the substitute then is anything ranging from a pair of shoes to a career, to their politics, to feminism or whatever. So the goal is to replace men uh, so that they don't feel vulnerable. 
uh-huh. so they don't feel dependent mm-hmm. uh, and and put something in the stead of a man, uh, yeah. typically a husband, marriage, that type of Good thing. Good luck with that. And well, yeah, and that's that's the thing is like you and I admit we like women, uh, and mm-hmm. then we you know we, we that's why you and I can laugh at Roosh writing a book yeah. about how to date. We're called uh, by the way, a play is called Game by Roosh V. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's a good book when you could read it. Um, but we acknowledge that we know, yeah, we like women. Well, yeah, what 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 else are we supposed to like? If there were no women, we'd probably maybe play video games or drink scotch or something like that. Mm-hmm. But it, life would really suck without women. There is a huge effort especially on the part of, eh, generally speaking, the political left, but I, I wouldn't necessarily peg it as so, mm. to eliminate that need from women's life so that it's less work for them. Because if you want to attract a man, there's a fair amount of investment in there. You got to stay in shape. You got to look pretty, da, 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 da. They're trying to move away from that so that there is no mm-hmm. obligation. There is no beholding, uh, uh, voluntary or not, yeah. Uh, to to the opposite sex in a woman's life. So, and yeah, yeah, you can have a very easy life pursuing that and substitute it with cats and master's degrees yeah, and, and shoes, but they are miserable. They are yeah. so miserable if you listen to these podcasts. <laughs> yeah. It's painful. Agreed. Hey, could you imagine, Aaron, if you had written your book, uh, your article rather, lambasting Mad Max with Charlize Theron, uh, what was it called? Something Fury. Uh, if you had written it now, you would have been blocked from everything. You know that? Oh, got, yeah. Just a mere, what was that, four years ago? Yeah. Was that three years ago? Yeah. And you got 13 oh, yeah. million uh, views on it. And mm-hmm. uh, forget it. It went viral. And now you would you would be exercised from the Internet. You yeah. Know? Well, and that's, and that's sadly why I got to spend my time coming up with aliases, doing redundancy, programming, all this stuff. And what really kind of pains me is y- you can't work on what you want. You know, you can't produce the products you'd like mm. to the point that I have to go and basically lie. I, I won't, I won't lie about it. Uh, several projects I'm working on are, are, are just basically outright lies and falsehoods, falsehoods and propaganda that uh, some are targeted towards women, but some is also targeted towards the general population. Mm-hmm. But it, it's kind of this Machiavellian where, uh, approach where it's like, all right, you guys are going to make it so hard to do what's right, honest, and moral in this case, and be honest. And mm-hmm. you guys want lies. And as a matter of fact, if I don't tell you lies, you're going to call me. I'm a racist, a sexist, a bigot, a homo, whatever. Uh, it's like fine. You know, you want you want poison, we'll give you poison. You want drugs, right. we'll give you drugs. Uh, and that's that's what society is going to reward you for. You know what? I got to put food on the table. I'd like to make sure I uh, cement my gains. I, I, Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, you know, uh, permanent, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I keep what I've worked for. Mm -hmm. And if that requires that I got to lie to people that want to be lied to fine, so be it. I'll do it. (laughs) Well, it's a dirty job, but somebody has got to do it. You know, we talk about these movies like Mad Max with the Femme Fury and Mm -hmm. another one that was a horror movie was Ocean's 8. Where all the women. Oh, did you see it? Yeah, they're all Sandra Bullock's in it. She's a genius, <laughs> and all the guys are morons. Like not uh-huh. fit, not fit to spit spit shine their shoes with their tongues. They are idiots. They are just the worst, lowest form of of man. No pun intended. And uh, the women are the geniuses, and they they take the men, and they you know. You got to. I don't want you to have to see the movie, but I don't want to give a spoiler either, right? Uh, go ahead. Get, I'm not going to watch it because I don't. I don't. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a remake of a remake. There wasn't and they that good a remake. A bunch of women. I, I don't need to see it. Then. Yeah, they just feminized all the leading parts, and somehow, and that is the trend in movies today. You know, I'm mm-hmm. sick of it. I don't want to see another movie with a female male lead character, a female who's mm-hmm. playing a male lead. It's garbage. Right. It's, it's a uh, demeaning, it's condescending to, uh, to males and it's bad for society. Well, and, and forget all that. It's just not entertaining. Yeah. Well, like, that too. If, 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 well, if all you got is let's take this movie that was made and remake it now with a different gender. I mean, mm-hmm. they did that with uh, ghostbusters it, it's telling you, it's telepathic to you that the people who directed or produced, whoever wrote it or whatever, they're not mm-hmm. talented. They can't come up with an original thing. So they're going to take something yeah. that already exists and maybe spin it a little bit differently. And, and, and so how good is the, it's, it's almost like a chef plagiarizing another chef's 
uh, dish or recipe, mm-hmm. well, oh, we're going to reorganize the plates a little bit and we're going to add uh, Tabasco sauce. Well, that's yeah. not a new dish. This is this I've already tried it. And now you ruined it with Tabasco sauce. Come up with something new and original, but yeah. they can't because that takes effort and work and talent. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's it's laziness and it's agenda driven remakes that have no value whatsoever, zero value, mm-hmm. right? And right. the sooner we get rid of them, the better. I mean, hopefully they made no money on this stupid Ocean's 8. Let's see what the, what did it gross, I wonder. I'm going to check it out. But, you know, it was a lousy movie and, uh, you know, it just really was sickening. So I, I'm glad I we're think off. Hollywood will find out. <clears throat> it may not be in yours in my lifetime, but the day is coming that Hollywood is going to find out that people don't want politics in their movies, yeah. but they don't want politics mixed in with the fun. Like, you know, what's great about back to the future. Mm. There was no Democrats or feminism or Republicans hey. or, or George Bush oh. or, or Donald Trump. It and was just, just, it didn't even, and if, if anything, it mentioned who's the president in 1985. And he says, Ronald Reagan. And then, uh, uh what was his name? Uh, Lloyd, Lloyd yeah. White says, Ronald Reagan, the actor. I mean, that was the only reference. You know, that, and that was right. a joke. And it was funny. And, and th- Hey, I went to see Seinfeld in West Palm Beach. Jerry mm-hmm. Seinfeld, he won't play in colleges anymore because he said it's pointless. They have no sense of humor. And right. <laughs> truer words. And our long show, including his half hour warm up act, there wasn't mm-hmm. one F bomb, not one four letter word, which four letter words are okay in comedy, but they shouldn't be a mm-hmm. substitute for comedy. And right. there was not one political reference in the whole evening. And everybody cheered and clapped and laughed hysterically. Nobody was thinking politics or, you know, should we do this? Should we do that? It was just a matter of having fun. And that's the thing. Politics takes the fun out of life. That's what it really comes down to, doesn't it? One Oh, it does. But one, the guy who epitomized that, and I saw him on his last show before he passed away, Don Rickles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He was the best. <laughs> we went in there. This oh guy was like God. 91 years old, and he's cutting every racial joke, ripping on everybody, didn't care. And the audience was mature and appreciated him enough to know he was joking. They got the joke. Yeah. And if he cut a funny joke against a Jew or an Asian he or was a black a Jew. guy, everybody loved it because yeah. they, he knew he was kidding. He would always make Jewish jokes and he was Jewish. And, he was Jewish, yeah. yeah. And like I, I was just watching him. It's funny you mentioned because one of the best ways to start your day, Aaron, before you get out of bed is watch mm-hmm. YouTube comedy clips. All right? Because... Okay. All right. Whatever your mood is, you watch like Rodney Dangerfield, you watch uh, Bob Newhart, you watch Mm -hmm. Don Rickles like I was this morning. And he goes on Johnny Carson and he's insulting Ed as being fat, a fat drunk. And uh, (laughs) is always having keg parties with the with the Clydesdales. And he's insulting Johnny as like, you know, not being a competent host, of which Johnny was the best host ever on any late Mm -hmm. night TV ever in the history of humanity, but uh, at least going back to him or before him, there were some good ones after Johnny, there hasn't been one good one, but he's insulting everybody and everybody's in hysterics about it. And the guy didn't mean it. And he was just a delight. The guy was delightful. He was married to the same woman his whole life. And Mm -hmm. uh, he just was, he just was a character. And you know, that's why wake up in the morning, listen to comedy. The only other thing that's better is, uh, or is good is to watch, uh, watch all these pundits before the 2016 election, explaining how Trump could not win, how Trump did not have a chance and that Hillary was going to be our next president guaranteed hundred percent positive about it. That those are great to watch because you hate the media you know, the media is politics. I hate the media. I mean, politics is just always has been, but it isn't the only thing. We have so much more in our lives, you and I, Aaron, mm. than just a political point of view that it's a, it's a limiting perspective on life that liberals cannot like anyone but other liberals. And they don't really like anyone, including themselves, because if they did, they wouldn't be liberals, right? 
I mean, it's that simple. Right. So, well, and what what's sad is you could take what I would say would be the epitome of American comedy. I'm sure some people might disagree, but we've been binge watching the Dean Martin celebrity roasts. Oh, those are great. And I would love nothing more than to make it mandatory viewing for every millennial and Gen Z <laughs> college student today oh, I love it. that you have to watch that and try not to laugh. And I, I think they'd yeah. be appalled because of all the give and take and racial and sexual uh, exchanges and jokes and everything. Yeah. And it's sad because like, if you can't laugh at that, my God, you're not human and you got to be miserable. You got to be absolutely yes. miserable if you don't like the, the Sammy Davis roast or the, oh or the, um, uh, the John Winters roast or uh, yeah. any one of those old classic 70s and 60s actors. I totally am with you. Uh, then they would get really nasty and uh, very profane and uh, they were just a lot of fun. Anyway, that's the tone. We have to leave you now, but to find Aaron's work over at captaincapitalism.blogspot.com. What's your YouTube channel, by the way? I just search Aaron Clary and then my other YouTube channel, you just search Older Brother. You'll find it. Excellent. Hey, and be a part of the show. Email us. If uh, you enjoyed this, if you didn't enjoy it, just send us an email to kl at kerrylutz.com. It's the best part of my days when I get your emails. The Twitter feed, if you so indulge, is at Kerry Lutz. And the Facebook page is Financial Survival Network. I'll try to post some stuff there. On my personal Facebook page, it's kind of a subset of that uh, Reddit board, The Florida Man. And we have just some great Florida anecdotes. I mean, the election... Politics aside is one of them. Anyway, Aaron, we'll talk to you again soon, man. You be well and stay warm. Thanks, Gary. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. 